come to you humbly without edge control, kinky coily curls, and a boohoo self-love tea. It is February 2022, Black History Month. We have the shortest month, but we will work with it because this is what we have. I decided that this year I wanted to do a four-part Black History Month series where I celebrate Black History Month in Atlanta, the Black Mecca of the South. Now with that, there, there are a few other things. Some days I might not be able to leave and venture out. So I have found a way to bring a little bit of everything into one vlog at a time or one video at a time. So here I am and I just opened a bottle of wine from sisters wine collection this is actually the black girl magic red blend i feel like i've tried this before lisa says i have i can't recall and i don't even know if it was the red blend that i tried i'm gonna try it out because i genuinely do not remember the taste and since we went to a wine tasting at chateau Ilan, maybe some of the skills that i've learned will come in handy She's a wild one. Hmm. We'll talk more about the wine later. Hmm. The Market and Bistro I'm about to discuss. Yes, it might have been. It definitely was. Caleb TV's idea and on her list of things to do. But hear me out. We didn't go to a black owned coffee shop the other day. So in order to fill this spot within my Black History Month video, I had to snatch something from her list. And then I will give her one of my coffee shops and then we can, we can swap it out as content creators. How about that? So I decided to be the test dummy for both of us and go to Nourish and Bloom located in Fayette County. actually has a beautiful pavilion out there where Walmart and Publix and Target are all in the same vicinity, which I think is interesting in itself. I think you will thoroughly enjoy it because everything is in one place. Anyway, we moved past that. Nourish and Bloom Market and Bistro is actually located off of Trillith Parkway. Now, what is the Trillith Parkway and why do we care about that? Trillith Parkway is also home to Trillith Studios. For all of you Marvel movie lovers, this is something I feel like you should know about. Many Marvel movies have been filmed in this studio, along with those that have really been consumed by the Love is Blind dating show. The After the Altar episode or reunion show, if you will, that was also filmed at that studio location. So very lackluster when you drive by it because the signs are extremely small. And I'm saying we because I want you to feel like you were there with me and I'm just recapping with you what we did. I promise you it's not below zero. I just need my scarf because I think I'm gonna have to stand outside while they get people in and out. I'm just blown away by the bistro that is inside of the market. The selection is outstanding. A fancy tuna sandwich that looks i mean looks really good very standard sandwiches then they have a thai shrimp hoagie situation they have a bacon egg and cheese omelets they have chicken soup french fries sweet potato fries options okay salads oatmeal grits options and that's the bistro that's not even the grocery items you know your orange juice but i want to say that this is more locally based Hmm. They have synergy drinks. They have cold brews for those that like that kind of thing. Lakewood products for those that like their pure pineapple juice like I do. Pricing is a little bit higher, I will say, but we'll see. We'll see what I come out with. I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm going to charge my phone for a little bit before I go in and then yeah, 
Wow. And I went on such a beautiful day. It just felt right. I went with my reusable grocery bag just in case. I wasn't sure how people were moving things through the market. I wanted to bring you the what to do before you go to the world's first black owned autonomous grocery store market and bistro. <music> particular market was important to this video because black history okay download the app number one don't think you can get around it because you can't similar to the amazon fresh or amazon grocery store you need the app you're going to input your payment information very necessary to the process or else what are you buying after you've inputted your payment information you can then scroll through the items that are available and you can possibly even pre-order these items and pick them up i didn't go into detail with that because i was already there once you've arrived you scan your qr code and you enter but on the app, it does tell you, you need to scan, let your friends and family go through first, and then you enter. Now, whatever you pick up and put in your bag, you will pay for it. Whatever you pick up and put back in the wrong spot, you will pay for it. Whatever you pick up and put back in the right spot, you won't pay for that. Hear me out. I like the concept because it forces people to put things back where they got them from. That means less cleanup and restocking for people that actually do work there because they do have staff on hand, mainly to guide you through if there are any hiccups with the technology and the bistro has a kitchen staff. So, you definitely need to know your way around technology at least a little bit so that you can review your order as you're picking things up and putting things back. But I will say it is a very small market. So don't think you are going into your neighborhood Target, neighborhood Walmart. It's not that big. You have maybe a U-shaped area of the market. It's not aisle after aisle after aisle. No, this is a bodega, but luxury. A bodega, but tech. A Wawa, but boutique. You get what I'm saying? items, uh, baby food, pet food, frozen items. They also had a coffee machine there for those that needed their fix. There is a wine section there, like a bookcase of wine, if you will. Well-constructed menu. I'm going to let you watch some more footage and I'm going to just take a little, a little sip of wine while you do that. Definitely an experience, I will say. Go with your phone charged. I look crazy. I'm sure I've told you in the midst of this video how to have a seamless experience when you go to Nourish and Bloom. There is a lot of traffic in the front. They're not made aware prior to visiting that this is the process or they just didn't look it up. Yeah, for me, it was a little rocky start because my phone was already dying and I underestimated how heavy the app was required. I thought it was just, okay, use it when you go in, check your receipt when you go out. I needed the Wi-Fi and everything. Anyway, so I decided to get the tuna, fancy tuna Waldorf. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's good. Okay, I'm back home. Not sure why this is coming off purple. It's blue. I got the Alexia Yukon select organic i have to hurry up and put these in the freezer now because that ride back home thawed them out i also got the just like smoked <laughs> 
provolone slices. It's funny because they're doing everything on this package to remind you that it is not in fact provolone cheese. It is an alternative from Vio Life, but it's 100% vegan. And it says free from dairy, soy, gluten, lactose, nuts, and preservatives with coconut oil and vitamin B12. Coconut oil, coconut oil. Mm, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. How many slices is in here? Oh, 10 per pack. So this is what I got as well. Okay, you're back. So yes, that's how that went. Pros and cons, okay? Because I'm not gonna sit here and just give you the highs. I need to give you the highs and lows and why I think you need to visit. Here we go. Nourishing Bloom is efficient. It is groundbreaking. It is for the culture. <laughs> Okay, but I also need to say that once we get a handle on the door, right, the congestion that happens at the front door, it would be so smooth to go through in and out like we're supposed to. But because people are still not really aware of the process of getting inside of the market, they are gathering at the front door, creating congestion and it's harder to move around. And I think that that is a kink that can easily be worked out because they opened not too long ago. So that's something that will flow over time. But to the person that actually goes in there to buy an apple, okay, I mean, sure, I guess, but the pricing, it is a little pricier than your Walmart, Kroger, Winn-Dixie, Food Lion, your Bodega. You are paying for no line, no weight. You are paying for locally grown or organic products. So just pay the two extra dollars and say you supported a black business, all right? I hope you don't think that this four part series is gonna be about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks. Mm, it's not, okay? We we know, we know. And if we don't know, we, we should have known. So we're not gonna talk about that. We know that already. There are other black historical people that we can find out about, okay? We can talk about the inventor of potato chips. We can talk about the inventor of the traffic light. We can talk about the inventor of the super soaker. We can talk about Ruby Bridges. We can talk about the woman that came before Rosa Parks. We're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. We can, but we won't. I hope you enjoyed this quick little black history with me. Did you get something from it? Black owned, woman owned. Come on now, get your wine, get your wine. I'm about to pour another glass, unwind, watch my movie, and I'll see you in the comments in the next video.